Hello, everybody. If you watched the Sunday night service in the garage on Sunday night, September 1st, you heard a message about demons and demonic uh, activity and power and things that they have. And we saw some examples in the Bible. Um, here are the scripture verses that I mentioned I would be reading. And these are just for you to listen to. There's um, all just verses about how we can overcome these spiritual battles. Uh, who Who is the battle really being fought by on our behalf? And things like that. I just want you to listen to these uh, and uh, see what you can glean from them. Here's the first one. It is Ephesians um, chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces in, of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and with the breath plate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Okay, the next one that we're going to look at is 1 John 4.4. 4. I'm using uh, Bible Gateway to pull each of these scriptures up. So this is 1 John 4.4. 4. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Satan is in the world and he is trying to overpower us, but Christ in us is more powerful and can save us from his uh, desires to attack us. Our next verse is 1 Timothy 4.1. Let me pull that up. 1 Timothy 4.1. The Spirit clearly says that in the latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Jesus spoke so much about deception in the last days, and we're in those days. And we have someone, the Spirit of God, to help see us through. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. Anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And what I have forgiven... If there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. You know, forgiveness is key to living a victorious Christian life. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. It's a couple chapters later. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. The God of this age that the Bible is talking about here is Satan, the devil. He has power here, and we can escape his power by turning our lives over to Christ Jesus. This is a very good one, James 2.19. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that, and they shudder. Job 4.15, very interesting verse. A spirit glided past my face, and the hair on my body stood on end. You may have experienced that at some point in your life. Pay attention when that happens. Matthew 8.31, we talked about this in the Sunday night service in the garage. The demons begged Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. The demons fear Jesus Christ because they know he is their ultimate judge and he will cast them into the bottomless pit called the abyss. Let's look at Matthew 12, verse 45. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. 
and the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. So when an evil spirit departs from someone, it goes into another person or another living thing, and it takes t seven more with it and makes that uh, power even greater and more evil than it was before. Luke 8.30 <clears throat> We also discussed this. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. A legion is a military term for um, the largest battalion or group of soldiers in an army, and that ranges from three to 6,000 soldiers. Let's look at Revelation 20.10. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. This is the um, final destination for Satan and all of the evil ones. 1 Corinthians 10, 20 through 21. No, but the sacrifice of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Psalms 106, 37 and 38. And this applies to America in a terrible way. They sacrifice their sons and their daughters to false gods. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was desecrated by their blood. This is about Job. Job 1, 20 and 21. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Job was tormented by Satan and his demons, and yet Job continued to give glory to God. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn, speaking about Satan. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead to the depths of the pit. That is Satan's end. Acts 9, verses 13 through 16. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. We can't impersonate Christians. We can't impersonate Christ. We have to have a true relationship with him. And he will help us and provide us and give us strength. Second Peter 2 verses 4 through 10. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of lawless, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desires of the flesh and despise authority, bold and arrogant, 
They are not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings. Revelation 9, 1 through 7. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any other plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. This is very interesting, and we can dive into that verse uh, at another time about what it is actually saying. Mark 1, 21 through 27. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. That's Jesus. Matthew seventeen fourteen through 20. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. I hope these verses will speak to you and help you understand the strength and power of the demonic world has over this world. Um, the only way to have the power of Christ is to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior and to trust in him uh, and what he is willing to do for us. So I ask you to consider this. You know, there's a demon world out there that's controlling the things that happen in this earth, and they're getting stronger and stronger all the time. And you can see this by what's taking place uh, in America, in Israel, and all the parts of the world. Uh, America uh, is no longer a Christian nation. It's a very worldly country, and we need to pray and ask God to redeem us from the sinful ways that this country has turned to. And we need to give our lives to Jesus Christ to be forgiven of our sins. God bless you.